Hi, I'm Daphne Richards, and this is Augie, CTG's resident doggy horticulturist. Our question of the week comes from Joy, who wants to know what's happening to her wine cups. The plant is decaying from the center outwards, and the leaves turn yellow and have bumps on the undersides. And right after we received this question, I noticed that the wine cups in the garden in front of my office are doing the same thing. We have a huge patch of them, about four feet in diameter, and death is slowly radiating from the center, ever closer to the edges of the plant. Joy suspects that she has rust, and we thought she might be right. But rust or not, we knew that this was most likely caused by some th sort of microbial pathogen, so we consulted my good friend Dr. Kevin Ong, extension plant pathologist from the Texas Plant Disease Diagnostic Lab. Well, Joy, great detective work. Dr. Ong confirmed that your initial research led you to believe rust, and he says that seeing reports of lots of it this year. Now for the not so great news. Unfortunately, there really isn't much to be done for the plant at this point. Fungicides may be successfully used on rust in many cases, but here, with the entire center of the plant already dead, you won't be able to reverse the damage, so you needn't bother with any treatment. This disease is likely a little more prevalent this year due to the fact that we had a relatively warm winter with better than average rainfall, and our spring temperatures warmed up very early. Because of this, our wildflowers came on early and strong, and microbes took advantage of the warmer, wetter than normal environment. I would suggest allowing the plant to flower until it becomes more unsightly than you can bear. Then cut the top growth back. Wine cups are perennials, so they should grow back from their underground tuber if it hasn't been damaged by staying overly wet. Wine cups prefer dry, rocky, very well-drained soil. So if you have organic mulch around them, be sure to remove it or at least push it back from the center. After you've cut the plants back, clean up any organic matter, including any mulch that you had around the plant. Rusts are very host specific, meaning that each species of rust usually only attacks a couple of specific plants, so the rust on your wine cups most likely won't damage the other plants in your garden. Dr. Ong also pointed out that the rust was most likely only the initial pathogen here. After it did some initial damage, other pathogens most likely moved in to take advantage of the weakened plant. So be sure to remove all of the possible source of the pathogenic spores that you can and toss it in the garbage. Our plant of the week is Celosia spectata, flamingo feather, sometimes called wheat straw celosia. We've long admired this warm winter annual in the east side patch garden of Philip Leverage, where it readily sows itself in sunny, decomposed granite paths. Philip notes that celosias prefer a well-drained, gritty soil. In fact, they're prone to root rot if kept too wet. At the same time, even though they love the heat, they do require supplemental water in drought. These are showy plants that get two to two and a half feet tall and about 14 inches wide. The vibrant pink flowers are great for dried arrangements and you can collect the seed to plant again next year. Plant seeds after the last frost to enjoy until the first freeze. Philip harvests seeds from his plants when they mature in November or December. At that time, he plants them where he wants to see them next year. Or you can save your seeds in a container to set out next spring. To do this week, collect seeds from your spring flowers if the seed heads are brown. We'd love to hear from you. Please visit klru.org ctg to send us your questions or a plant of the week from your garden. Mm -hmm.